Hello, in this video we are going to be looking at Leibniz's version of the innate knowledge thesis. Now as you know, um, innate knowledge is a characteristic of the rationalist school of philosophy, that is the school of philosophy that believes that all knowledge is a priori and is either innate in us when we're born or derived from reason from that innate knowledge, so to speak. All right, so uh, Leibniz um, was an early modern philosopher, as you can see from his date, 1646 to 1716, and he had the wonderful full name of Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz. All right, uh, and in the syllabus, um, you need to know um, about his block of marble analogy and how that relates to the innate knowledge thesis. Let's look at some preliminaries. So, first of all, Leibniz opposes Locke's view that the mind at birth is a tabula rasa or blank slate and the thought that everything marked on it comes from sense experience. Now, actually, that's something that um, all rationalists will oppose. Every rationalist will oppose the idea that the mind at birth is a tabula rasa. But Leibniz does so specifically. Now, Leibniz aligns himself somewhat with Plato's doctrine of recollective knowledge, which you can look at in another video. He says, mythical though it is, it is not incompatible, in my part at least, with bare reason. So there's this idea, um, it's known actually as Leibniz's monadology, and you don't need to know too much about that, uh, but the idea that um, there are eternal truths contained within us as a result of this monadology. So um, Leibniz believes that the soul contains certain principles that are hidden in us and that are caused to appear by the contact of the sense, like sparks which shock off the flint strike the strikes from the steel. All right. So in other words, um, we have this innate knowledge in us and it requires experience to trigger it. All right. And Leibniz believes that these innate principles are divine and eternal. And one such principle is reason. And Leibniz does uh, focus in on this, particularly in relation to mathematics. And just as an aside, um, it is probable that it was Leibniz that invented mathematical calculus, not uh, Isaac Newton, as is conventionally believed. But because Newton had uh, many friends uh, in high places went, and a lot of recognition, he got the credit for it. But it, it probably was Leibniz uh, that invented mathematical calculus. But he was a humble librarian and never received uh, the credit that he deserved. Anyway, back to the here and now. As I say, he believed um, that reason is a principle that is divine and eternal and focus, uses this uh, principle uh, in his focus on mathematics. All right? um, so, for example, the idea that 1 plus 1 equals 2 is evident to us without the requirement of evidence. All right? Empiricists only show us that concepts are true in the present, i.e. when we experience them. But 1 plus 1 always equals 2, meaning it is an innate idea, as we do not see every instance, but know it to be true in every case, independently of experience. And so Leibniz thinks that uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2 is a necessary truth, all right, um, and that such necessity is divine and eternal. So... Uh, another necessary truth, it is impossible for the same thing to be and not be. All right? And this can be known necessarily regardless of experience. And since everyone agrees with this, Leibniz argues that knowledge must be innate. Right? No one could be thought of as reasonable if they thought that something could exist and not exist at the same time or be the same thing and not be the same thing at the same time. All right. So these are necessary truths of reason that exist in us and, according to Leibniz, are divine and eternal. And we are born with them. So he believes that the success of scientific experiments is enough to confirm reason as an innate principle. For otherwise, how would we know how to set up an experiment in the first place? And Leibniz distinguishes between sequences of ideas and reasons. Now, sequences of ideas are formed through induction. Okay, For example, um, because I've been fed this morning and for the last several years, I will be fed tomorrow. Right? Every day in my life, I have seen the sun rise, and so therefore I'm justified in believing that it will do uh, tomorrow. 
Okay, these are sequences of ideas, and through induction, we can sort of um, reason truths. All right, um, and again, in other videos, I talk about uh, induction and the problem of induction. Um, so the innate principle of reason makes you look for why you will believe that you will be read, fed tomorrow or why you believe that the sun will rise tomorrow. What is the reason that something happens? And Leibniz says, reason alone is capable of setting up rules which are certain and of supplying what is lacking to those which are not certain. This provides the means of foreseeing the event without it being necessary to experience the sensible connections between images. This is what distinguishes man from the brutes. Right? And so here he's also actually saying that animals are not born uh, with innate knowledge in the way that humans are, because humans have this divine and eternal principle of reason already built in, and that makes us look for answers. And through that capacity and through that motivation, uh, we then use induction um, to develop our science. So Leibniz furthers this argument by making his famous block of marble analogy. And he conceives of the mind as a block of veined marble. And he thinks that the ideas of being, unity, substance, duration, change, activity, perception, among others, are innate in us. All right. So we have the idea of substance. As soon as we talk about objects, we're talking about the idea of substance, right? Um, we talk about we have the idea of duration already in mind. So we talk about things beginning and having an end, right? This is not something that we have to learn from experience. Um, we understand things as having starts and finishes when we experience them to begin with, all right? Um, and we have the idea of being in ourselves. Right? So all of these ideas, um, Leibniz thinks, are somehow within us at birth and that it just requires a bit of experience um, for us to realize them um, in knowledge. Okay, so the veins in the marble correspond with innate ideas in the mind. And he says, I have taken as an illustration a block of veined marble rather than a tabula rasa. For if the soul were like a tabula rasa, truths would be in us in the same way as the figure of Hercules is in a block of marble when the marble is completely indifferent to whether it receives this or some other figure. But if there were veins in the stone which marked out the figure of Hercules rather than other figures, this stone would be more determined thereto and Hercules would be, as it were, in some manner innate in it, although labour would be needed to uncover those veins. So there's this idea that knowledge is in some sense innate in the mind and that we just need experience to uncover that knowledge in the same way that we need labor to uncover the veins um, in the marble to reveal the statue of Hercules. So it's in this way, Leibniz continues, that ideas and truths are innate in us like natural inclinations and dispositions, natural habits and potentialities. All right, so Leibniz's main claim is that the, the mind is not a tabular rasa at birth, that there is a blueprint there that contains um, eternal principles such as reason, and that it just requires a bit of experience um, for this knowledge to be triggered, in the same way that a block of marble contains veins. And if those veins were in such a way that all you would have to do is to chisel them out to create a particular statue, i.e. follow the pattern, Right. That's the analogy that that Leibniz has in mind when it comes to innate knowledge. So that's the end of this video. Um, I would like you to think about Leibniz in relation to um, Plato's version of innate knowledge and perhaps Descartes as well and compare and contrast.